In this lesson, we will talk about the nuclear stability. In other words, what keeps the nucleons together in a nucleus? There are four types of forces that we are aware of. The Newtonian force, the electrostatic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. A nucleus is a collection of protons and neutrons. The neutrons and protons are from a group of particles or elementary particles called fermions. The quarks that mix up fermions are held together by bond-like structures called gluons. Each quark has a fractional charge of an electron. They can either be a positive two-thirds or a negative one-third the charge of an electron. Let's look at the three quarks that mix up protons and neutrons. In a proton, you've got two up quarks and one down quark. This sums up to be two-thirds for the first quark plus two-thirds for the second quark minus one-third for the third quark. And the overall charge of a proton then becomes a positive one times the charge of an electron. The neutron has two down quarks and one up quark. Therefore, the charge calculation will be minus a third, minus a third for the second quark, plus two thirds. That gives us a net charge of zero. Because the nucleus is made of protons, protons being positively charged, they will repel each other. Let's explore the strong nuclear force. The nucleus force is at least 130 times stronger than the Coulomb force at short distances of about 2.5 Fermis. It should be noted though that for larger nuclei, the strong nuclear force starts to dissipate and you get the Coulombic force taking over as a repulsive force. The neutrons and protons can spin about their own axis. These are together called nucleons, as they are found in a nucleus. The nucleons and electrons are from a group of particles or elementary particles called fermions. These fermions are spin half particles. The nucleons, meaning the neutrons and protons, have spin angular momentum as well as orbital angular momentum. The total angular momentum of a nucleus is quantized according to the square root of i into i plus 1 h bar, where the nuclear spin is 0, half, 1, and so forth. A nucleus can have even, even number of protons or neutrons, even odd number of protons or neutrons, or odd, odd protons or neutrons. Let's look at the following example of atoms with nuclei having different number of protons and neutrons. Helium-4 has two protons and two neutrons. Helium-3 has two protons and one neutron. Nitrogen-14 has seven protons and seven neutrons. And even, even nucleus will have spins of the individual nucleons cancelling each other, resulting in the net nuclear spin of zero. And even odd nucleus will have a net nuclear spin of half. And an odd odd nucleus will have a net angular spin of one. Pauli's exclusion principle only permits two protons to be on the same energy level. The same also applies for neutrons. Let's consider a system of seven neutrons in an infinite square well. Two neutrons can occupy the same energy state, provided they are in opposite spins. The total energy of this system can therefore be calculated as follows. If instead of the seven neutrons, we take four neutrons and three protons so that the total number of nucleons is still seven. This will substantially bring down the total energy of the system because 
two protons and two neutrons can occupy the same energy state. Among 3,000 known nucleides, only about 257 of them are stable at ground state. Consider a plot of neutrons against protons as shown. Small atoms are mostly stable when their number of protons are equal to the number of neutrons. The straight line is where the neutrons equal the number of protons. The curvy black line is known as the line of stability. All neutrons outside the line of stability would be unstable, hence undergo radioactive decay. Consider a plot of the nuclear potential against the radius of the nucleus. The negative potential denotes attractive force, whereas the positive potential denotes repulsive force. When the radius becomes big, some of the neutrons will no longer be subjected to the strong nuclear force. When the number of protons increases, the Coulomb forces increases as well, resulting in a bigger nucleus which requires more neutrons than protons to achieve stability. When you sum up the mass of the nucleons that makes up a nucleus, you always find that the sum total of the mass is always greater than the mass of the nucleus. Mass defect is given by the mass of the nucleus minus the mass of the nucleons. The binding energy of these nucleons is given by the mass defect multiplied by the square of the speed of light. Let's take an example of carbon-12. The molar mass of carbon-12 is 12 standard atomic mass unit, which is equal to 12 times 1.66 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. The mass of the proton, 1.67262 times 10 to the power minus 27. The mass of one neutron is 1.67493 times 10 to the power minus 27, slightly heavier than the mass of a proton. Since carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons, the total mass of the nucleons will be given by 6 times the mass of protons plus 6 times the mass of the neutrons. And this will give us 2.00853 times 10 to the power minus 26. The mass defect will therefore be given by the mass of the nucleus minus the mass of the nucleons. And that gives us 1.558 times 10 to the power minus 28 kilograms. We can then calculate the binding energy as the mass defect multiplied by C squared. Binding energy will also be negative because energy is lost when you combine the nucleons together to form a nucleus. The opposite is also possible. In other words, you need the very same amount of energy to break a nucleus of carbon-12 in its six protons and six neutrons.